Hi, this is Petey at Bergzerk Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial 240. Now this is part three of our loot window and uh, where we left off we had just uh, put a panel in for our loot window and I still have to figure out why this is not going right but uh, as we found out we couldn't actually add our horizontal um, layouts in there, at least not yet. And I haven't actually got around to sitting down and taking a look at the code to see how we're going to do it so I'm actually going to skip the actual panel part for now and uh, work on these actual buttons that we're creating and basically find a way to index these so that we know when we're clicking them which one we're clicking because we're going to have uh, particular items stored to these uh, buttons and I want to make sure that when I'm clicking them I'm actually you know getting the right item that's going to be in the loot window and we'll also want to take a look at how to set up our uh, click events for these so let's go ahead and open up uh, Mono Develop which is right here and to start off with I'm gonna get rid of all the panel code as we don't need it uh, I'm just gonna save that off I'm just gonna take a quick run make sure that all four rows are showing up again they are and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna to have to do my buttons a little bit differently here uh, if we see here we just have the array to set up to only hold four buttons and then we just keep creating uh, the same four buttons over and over. Uh, we're going to want to change that a bit. Uh, I'm probably uh, off the top of my head. I know I'm probably going to want. Um, I guess it's kind of a just desi uh, design decision. Uh, part of me wants to make another function that dictates how big this array is actually going to be, uh, simply because you might actually have. Um, Maybe some mob you kill, it drops like 20 items. You have maybe your average mob you kill, it drops, you know, maybe only two or three items. Uh, and you don't really want this array to be, you know, huge if you don't need it to be. If your average uh, drop is, say, less than nine, you could probably get away with just doing a three by three. And right now I have it set to a four by four. And I actually think I am going to switch it to a three by three. So I'm going to start off by creating some constants up here. And. Well, I guess not constants. I'm going to make them uh, variables. Uh, this is for the loot window, so I am going to make them static, public statics. And uh, I'm going to get rid of our little grid now. We don't need that anymore. And these will be of type int, and I'm just going to call it a number of rows. And Uh, to start off with, I'm going to say three. And we have an error on the line above us. And that's actually because we've put it in the start method. And we want it above the start method. We don't want it inside of any of the functions. All right. Now you might notice I kind of call them functions and methods interchangeably. and uh, technically, there is a difference between the two. A function actually returns something. Uh, but to me, you'll hear me refer to it as a function or a method uh, quite a bit. So just an FYI. So anyway, we've created the number of rows. We also want to go ahead and create a public static int, not an oint, int, and slots per row. So slots per row. And again, I'm going to start that off at three. Uh, so that means we're actually going to, our average pack will have uh, nine items. And I highly doubt I'll ever change the number of slots per row, but just the number of rows. Uh, but just in case we do actually want to change, I'm just going to leave the variable there for now. I'm going to come down to the bottom. I'm going to create a new function. And uh, we'll just make this a public void. And I'm going to say uh, window setup. We don't really need to call it loot window. Uh, we're going to make this, um, well, there's only ever one. Uh, we'll, just, we'll just call it setup for now. We're not going to worry about making everything a singleton and everything else. We'll just call it setup. And well, I'm going to pass in uh, two values. And I'm just going to say int row, int slots. And what this is for is just telling it to um, load up a number of rows or slots. 
So we'll just actually change those numbers. So we'll just say number of rows is equal to rows and slots per row is equal to slot and I'm actually going to make that plural now I really should be making this a singleton and I probably will afterwards uh, I want to flesh a little bit more of the functionality out first but uh, I but now you should actually be able to make your singletons on your own. We've done it a few times now. Uh, it shouldn't be too alien to you. So if you want to work ahead, go ahead and actually create this into a singleton class. And, uh, well, you'll be a whole tutorial ahead of us. Okay, so we've got that set up. Of course, we could just make this static as well, so we can call it outside of um, the actual instance of this window. But like I said, we are going to make it singleton, so I'm not going to bother. I just want a way to be able to set up the slots and rows if they're going to be changed. All right, so we've got that. Now we're going to want to go ahead and take, uh, we're actually setting the number of slots and these number of rows. We're going to want to change these as well. So I'm going to move them up to our, I've read about the start method here where we're going to define all of our global variables and I'm going to want to move them up there. So let's actually just move them. And we'll just paste them right here. Uh, I'm going to make them private. I don't want them accessible outside of this class. And we'll just save that off. And now we're going to have to play around a bit with um, how they're set up here because, uh, well, by default, we're setting them up to be of size four, but that's not necessarily what we're going to want to do. We're going to want to be using these numbers, but we don't want to assign these numbers in here. We want to assign these numbers when we actually get to the point of. Um, uh, having to use these values. So I'm actually just going to end it right here and do the exact same thing right here. And I'm just going to, well, let's cut this here. We'll put it into the start. Uh, get rid of the private part. <laughs> I actually get rid of the whole beginning part. And we'll just have row is equal to uh, and we'll just grab this here except instead of using uh, the four for the horizontal layout we're going to use number of rows and same thing with the slots so I'm just gonna delete this move this up uh, say slots is equal to and I believe it was singular yes slot is equal to UI button and of course we want slots per row uh, so we get rid of this line uh, there we go now the way we have it set up right now we have to make sure we actually call this first if we want it to be different than a 3x3 uh, but let's save that off. We'll go ahead into Unity and let's see if we have any errors. Uh, we have none. Let's start it up. And here we go. We got a three by three, uh, but we still can't access these buttons the way we want. Uh, to demonstrate that, let's go ahead and start working on our click events. Uh, so let's go back into Unity. Now we're already approaching nine minutes actually, and I, I want to go back to keeping these videos fairly short as uh, uh, re people's retention levels are just a little bit better. Uh, for shorter videos so I'm gonna go ahead and actually just quickly demonstrate how to change these now you're gonna have some outside script that's calling this uh, more than likely your chess script and I say if you didn't want to have a 3 by 3 you could just change it up here but there might be certain instances where you actually want the, um, a different grid size and just to quickly demonstrate I'm gonna come up here into the setup or sorry the, the start and I'm just gonna call setup up here and I'm just going to pass in, uh, I don't know, 5x5. Five five. And we'll come back into Unity. We'll start it back up. And here we go. We got a 5x5. Five five. Uh, once we get the panel working, we'll have to uh, figure out some way that we're going to adjust the panel size. Because uh, uh, mine is going to be defined for a 3x3, three three, but we're going to want to have a way to have it uh, be able to adjust its size. And possibly, if we don't adjust the size, uh, at least accommodate for scroll bars. So we can scroll left and right and up and down for uh, to explore more slots. But anyway, 
Uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to demonstrate in this one. Well, actually, there was more I wanted to demonstrate, but that's pretty much all the time we have in this one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete some of this code that we're not using anymore, just to keep things a little bit cleaner and more sane. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to call it uh, done here, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.